All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another session of Quick Fix Golf on the air, on the Internet, absolutely free, which is an absolute waste of your time for the next 45 minutes. But you might actually laugh a little bit. You might learn something. And here we have with us Jim Mason, director of golf at Pendleton Golf Club, which is just north of Kings of Million. Tell them all about Pendleton, Jim. Well, as you said, we're in Ladysmith, right on Route 1, beautiful golf course. Golf course is in great shape. I'd like to have everybody come out and give us a try. All right, well, let's kick this off here. I've already pressed the record button. <laughs> Look at this guy. You think he's juiced or what? I think a little bit, yeah. Unbelievable. All right, and of course, for some of you that are new and you don't know who we are, and you, you know, when a webinar, you can't really see who's behind door number one. There's a picture of me right there. <laughs> Whoa. I never let, let Jim know what the pictures are. So he, I, I can't wait to see mine. <laughs> now, that does look like me, doesn't it? Yeah. It's about like me after I had the third cup of coffee over there at Pendleton in the morning on a Saturday. And your, your tenth lesson. <laughs> <laughs> then, of course, we've got Jim Mason with us, director of golf. See, he's the more studious type. <laughs> see, he looks more like a professor. I look like Sonny Bono. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> if he would have lived that long, <laughs> unbelievable. But of course, a quick fix golf. We use nothing but the best. V one, same stuff that Tiger raves about, and all the other players use. We can take your video for your lesson and put it on your cell phone. We can put it on the uh, on a banner in front of your house in your neighborhood. Whatever you want, you can get a lesson there, so everybody knows you're working on your golf game. And Jim, tell them all about Pendleton. There's a good picture of the sixth hole. Yeah, it's like playing golf in Scotland without the cost of the airfare. You know, we're easy to get to from everywhere. About 20 minutes north of Ashland, 30 minutes south of Fredericksburg. You know, great golf course. We had a bunch of people play this weekend. Everybody loved it. What about the uh, six-pack? Doesn't that end this week or something? It ends the 30th. You can get your six-pack and buy them online or come in the shop. Six rounds, and the rounds are good till the end of the year and get a good price on them. Yeah, I mean, some of those go all the way down to the 20s or something, doesn't it? What's, what's the six-pack light? How much is that a round? Yeah, that's 169 for six rounds. It's a, like $28.16 a round. I'm telling you, if you picked that golf course up in Carter, the California, it would be over 150 bucks, 200 bucks to play it. That's how nice it is. And, of course, we also teach at Patterson Sports Park besides Pendleton Golf Club. And they have a special going on Wednesday mornings from 10 to 12. You can hit balls until your hands bleed. Hit all you want for $9.95. Great. And we do have some Callaway balls left. We don't have any more of the Chrome. The Chromes are, I think I got maybe three dozen Chromes. They're basically gone. So what we've got left is the Hex Black, the same ball that Phil was using that he threw in the water on the fire. <laughs> <laughs> for only nineteen ninety nine for members or anybody who's been listening in on the webinar. And that, that ball is, what, 46 bucks a dozen. The reason why it's so cheap is because the word practice is on the side, but it's not a range ball and it's not a practice ball. It's it's what Callaway tries to get on tour at a tour event where the guys hit those. And, but they're brand new, never been hit. It's the real ball. I play with it myself. Right. Now, U.S. Open results. We thought we'd cover some of that first. Our real topic this evening, of course, is about you know getting it close from 10, 20, and 30 yards. And we're going to look at some stats from the PGA Tour. But... Um, Let's look at some stats from the U.S. Open, and I thought we'd take a look at Michael. Where'd he go? Here's another child prodigy, just like the kid that was in the uh, in the Masters, right? And he was Korean too, wasn't he? Yeah. No, he was Chinese. He was Chinese. That's right. This guy's correct. I can never tell the difference anyway. So looking at his stats here, look at this, 19 years old. Now enough to piss you off. I'll look at this. <laughs> Field average was 62% for hitting fairways of regulation. He was 63. So he was, hey, listen, even at field average, you're talking about some of the best players in the world, if not the best players. You've got the strongest field there is in the U.S. Open, I think. Right. Stronger than the Masters. So he was, even with the field at the age of 19, that ain't bad. And he beat the field in greens hit and regulation. And he beat the field in sand saves. And look at how short he was off the tee. 269 off the tee, 270. 
which isn't bad for a pencil neck weenie. I mean, he's just a skinny little kid who isn't skinny at 19, right? Right. Where the field was averaging 287. And he beat the field in putts. His average was 1.67 putts. The field average was 1.74. So, again, the putting and the short game, sand saves, things of that sort are big. Maybe we should look at also, uh, because he did win the thing, let's look at Justin Rose and see what his stats were. He beat the field and fairways hit. That's a big one at that track. That's huge at any U.S. Open. Right. And then Green's hit, he beat the field by a good 10%, almost. That's pretty good. Sand saves, he was the same as the kid, 50-50. But he didn't hit in any bunkers. Look, he only had one of two. He hit in one bunker in, in, uh, in two bunkers in four days. That's why he won. That ain't bad. And he was, he was hitting the three bills off the tee. And his putting was the same as the kid, 1.67. So uh, that gives you an idea of what the real numbers are. Well, let's look at Mickelson, see what he did. You want to see that? Okay. Let's look at uh, the Filster. Oh, we got to go to N, Nicholson. Nicholson, come on, you dumb Cuban. Can't you spell? There he is right there. Where? You went past him. Go up. How could he be? That's the right end. There. Right there. Oh, Mickelson. I'm thinking Nicholson. What an idiot. Honest to God, I'm telling you, I need to see a doctor. <laughs> oh, look. Here he is. He's 68% fairways hit, 75% on greens hit and regulation. Sand saves 40%. He averaged 288 off the tee. He was even with the, with, with the field. That's surprising. But he left his driver home. Yep. So he hit it just as far as everybody else with his three-wood. And his putts were 179, so it was a little above the field, just barely. Hmm. The stats are pretty good. Well, yeah, I mean, he only missed it by what? Two shots? One shot. Oh, no, he did bogey 18, so it was two yeah, shots. Yeah, two shots. So, I mean, that's nothing to sneeze at. And Day, look at him. He Let's look at Day real quick. That kid's going to win a major. He's come in second twice in a row. Yeah, he's so he's far this year. He could win the British. Yeah, he may win the British. Well, look at this. He was even with the field and fairways hit. He was a little above the field and greens hit. He was uh, below, well, about field average for sand saves. But his putts, look, 161, field average 174. He beat, I mean, I don't know how you win anything without beating the field on putting. And look at this knucklehead. He was knocking at 312. Maybe yeah, he's he, juiced. He's pretty solid. Well, he's Australian. And I, I never played with an Australian that didn't knock the crap out of him. At the European Tour, when I played back in the 70s, every Australian could drink more beer and hit it further than anybody. <laughs> that was just fact. There <laughs> was no fiction about it. That was fact. Oh, Maron, they were unbelievable. Great guys, too. All right, so let's move right along here. Where are we here? So that's that's some of the stats that went on. What happened to Rory? <laughs> let's look at this. Let's see if we can go right to this YouTube here. We can see how he bent his club. Oh, stop with this. Skip the video. What the heck is this? Unbelievable. Okay, it's gone. Skip ad. There we go. Now watch this. Here he Boom. Uh-oh, that wasn't good. And he even has a white belt on. In the drink. In the drink he goes. Ah, uh, too bad. Now watch. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he bends the Project X shaft. <laughs> now watch this. He's going to try and bend it back. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we all have those moments, I guess. He's going to try and bend it back. There's no way. You can't bend it back. So, you know, I was wondering, what, what do you think's causing him to not play like he used to? What, what do you think the problem is? I don't know. Well, 
You know, it could be like these uh, major league pitchers or athletes, when they get these huge contracts, all of a sudden they lose focus on what got them there, and the next year they have a down year. Plus, he changed equipment. You know, these guys have their equipment tweaked to such an edge that, you know, change, totally changing equipment might have thrown his game off and thrown it off just a little bit could have really affected him. Well, didn't Romo from the Cowboys, didn't he have a problem where he got a good-looking girlfriend or something? That was the end of that. He started playing bad. Well, yeah, I mean, that'll do it. He had a little distraction. Well, let, let's see here. Hold on here. Uh, let me see. If we look at, where is it? Uh, oh, I see. Wait a minute. Hold it. I think we've got something here that might show. No, that's not it. My, here it is. Here's some of the reason he might be having a problem. <laughs> look at his new girlfriend. Now, wait a minute. Here's another thing. She's bigger than, look at this over here. She's bigger than he is. Yeah. Look at this. A heck of a lot bigger. It looks like she could knock the snot out of him. You think she whacked someone in the back of the butt with that tennis racket? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's messing him up? What's he doing out here in a tennis match with her? Look at that. Marron. Unbelievable. Well, no wonder he's having trouble. I, I, I can sympathize with that. I understand. Okay, so those things happen. So let's see what else went on. Oh, look at this. It's Sergio. <laughs> what happened to him? Welcome to GoToWebinar. Web events made easy. Hat, hat. I think Sergio had a, had a triple on one hole for a cross hole. <laughs> Three balls out of bounds. Now, wait a minute. Hold it. After the first one, you don't say to yourself, you know, uh, give me a three wood. <laughs> and after the second one, <laughs> give me a wedge. <laughs> Imagine the conversation with the caddy, huh? Yeah? <laughs> Unbelievable. Three in a row. This guy's this guy's like he's freaking out or something. He's he's having a meltdown. Between yep. this and the TPC? Yep. Unbelievable. Un. Believable. Now, we also had Steve Stricker. Oh, poor Steve. I'm telling you. Let's take a look and see what happened to Steve Stricker. We've Here all done is. this. We've all done this before, too. Watch this. Here he goes. He's lined it up real good. Let me see here. And, well. <laughs> <laughs> the hobble rocket. <laughs> oh, we got to play that again. That's too good. <laughs> That's a chili pepper up lead. Well, here, here, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Any of you guys watch, at least you can feel a little better. You know, here he hit the cut. How come he didn't knock an OB? It, he did. It did? It went out of bounds? Let's see, well, the first, that was his third shot. The first one he knocked out of bounds. Then really? he hit his provisional, and then he hit that shot. And I think that went out of bounds, too. Poor guy. <laughs> What can I tell you? Hold on. I should turn that other thing off. Wait a minute. Where the heck is it? Where'd it go? Stop it. Somebody yakking back there. Unbelievable. <laughs> so that makes some of the guys feel better. All right. So now, uh, well, we already looked at his stats. The heck with him. Now, PGA Tour, when it comes to proximity to the hole from 30 yards, what do these guys really do? We're going to go over what they really do, what the stats are, what the real facts are, undisputable facts. And then we're going to give you a couple of tips on how to improve your chances to where you can somehow come close to these numbers that you're going to watch here. Okay, PGA Tour, from 20 to 30 yards, number one guy, Robert Carlson. Who the heck is he? I like he's from Sweden or something. Yeah, I think so. Right, number of shots, 26, scrambling rank, he's 89th. 
So other parts are suffering. But he gets it around six and a half feet from the hole. Roberto Castro, six feet, eight inches. So you go down the line here and you see these guys from 20 to 30 yards be able to hit the ball. The worst guy in the pack gets it within 13 feet, four inches. That's his average. Look at Dustin Johnson. Yeah. Next to the bottom. Are you kidding me? Yeah, he's terrible with a wedge. Well, look at John Daly. He ain't much better. Look at that. He's not. Ernie Els. I'd like to see what the stats were for Leach. Of course, he didn't have all these kind of stats and crap and everything. You didn't have computers. You'd have to write it down. Steve Marino. Now, he's a, he's a Richmond guy. Eight feet, eight inches. That ain't bad. We got to see if we can get him to go on the webinar. I don't know if he'd do it. He didn't want to ruin his reputation. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Mike Weir. Mike Weir can't hit it out of a shadow, but he gets he can hit it within seven feet. Stuart Appleby. Isn't that amazing? See, so if you go back and look at the putting stats, you see that once you get outside of six foot, their numbers really tank. So the closest guy is getting at six foot five inches, which tells you that their conversion ratio from twenty to thirty yards to getting par or you know hitting it up and putting it only once is not that high. Right. It can't it can't be. I mean it can't be more than forty percent. That's what I'm catching on to with this whole thing. You know, you gotta you gotta find out how big the hole is. Is it a three foot circle, four foot circle, five foot circle, six foot circle? Nobody's a hundred percent from six feet. There are some guys that are a hundred percent from four feet. So right. nobody here is getting it up and down every time from twenty to thirty yards. It ain't happening. So now if we go over here and take a look at the next stat, which is over thirty yards. The best guys, eight foot. Look at Luke Donald. Now that makes sense, see? Mike Weir, he's still up there, eight feet nine inches. The Mike Weir is like dead last in uh, distance off the tee. Is this thirty yards to how long? Thirty. I don't know. It says thirty plus yards. Who knows? But let's see. The worst guy is seventeen feet. So if he's on average 17 feet, on average, he doesn't get up and down. Look at Tiger, 15 feet, yeah. one inch. So yeah. he's not converting. Boo Weekly makes sense. I can see why he's not a David Toms. Hmm. See, so you got to say to yourself, hey, you know, if I'm 30 or more yards off the green, I can't count on getting up and down every time. It ain't going to happen. These guys ain't doing it. You know, I think a lot of guys, they get disappointed. They get down on themselves when they don't get it up and down from there. You say, hey, you can't be 100% anyway. Right. You know, then the next, the next thing, we can go back again to revisit some of these. Here's the next one, which is, well, that was 10 to 20 yards. That's the one we had. Hold on. I got another one here for 10 yards. Under 10 yards. And now you're going to see the numbers change. Justin Leonard, 2.2. So under 10 yards, he's getting up and down almost every time. So that would mean that his, well, I don't know. This thing says proximity to hole from 10 yards. Does that necessarily mean it's off the green? Yeah, it says around the green. So it's not putting. It's got to be chipping and everything else combined. Right. See? Uh, Trevor Immelman, that makes sense. Look at it. Sergio Garcia, 2.7. Let's go to the worst guy, 5.3. I don't see Y.E. Yang. Look at it, 4.2. John Rollins, Richmond guy, 4.0. Man, uh, Tommy Ganey, 3.7.
See, so these guys are not getting it. Well, I mean, from that distance, everybody right here up till four feet is getting up and down more than not. Let me see. How far is four feet? Right here, four feet, even four feet, four inches. Most of them can, can convert from there. Yeah. It was approach to green. Let's see. Green's in regulation. We don't care. Um, scoring. Approaches from those show those are long. Yeah, so that that's the numbers we want right there. Then you got to say, okay, well, what what is it that can make me do better? Number one, leave the ball in better places. <laughs> when you you're in rough, it's up to your butt. <laughs> And you're looking for snakes right around your ball. Chances are you haven't got a real good lie. <laughs> and you're probably not going to get it close no matter how close you are to the green. But you got to leave the ball in better places where there's flat ground and good grass to hit off of. Be meticulous about your alignment. What do you think of that one, Chief? Well, that's true on any golf shot. But especially when you're coming into the green, yeah. Yeah, I mean, line up that leading edge of the golf club exactly where you want to go. And then swing the club straight back from there and straight forward towards the hole. I mean, this is like rolling a straight ball to pick up the seven pin if you were bowling. You palm it. You know, it's not you don't rotate your forearms over like you normally would. Right. And then do you do you concentrate on like the, the flow and tempo of your arms when you I'm hit always, a ball thirty yards? Yeah, I'm always working on tempo, even on short shots. Yeah, I mean you, you know, I just use the arms and keep the body steady. I see, I was doing some video today sending people on putting, and, man, their head is up and looking at the hole before they even finish hitting it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And the same thing with this. I guarantee you, if you take a video of them hitting a 30-yard shot, their head's looking at the hole already. Unless you're Superman, you got x-ray vision or something, you can't do anything looking at that ball to make it go in the hole. You know, you already hit it. Stay down, stay still, and don't move. Keep you from pulling it left or blocking it right or... Doing a Steve Stricker. <laughs> he must have felt good after hitting that shank, huh? Oh, I feel wow. bad. Oh, man, it's happened to everybody. Whoops. Go backward. Okay, so th those are the tips, really. So let's open up the uh, – where's the uh, – you son of a gun. Like, I really – you think I know how to do this thing by now. There we go. All right, we've got some people here. Listen, who's got a couple of questions? Go ahead and fire away, and we'll try and answer them for you on some lob shots or short shots around the green. These are all things you can practice, and by the way, you can practice over at Pendleton. Pendleton, you got, Jim, you did a good job in that thing there where you got the, you got the little elevated green with two bunkers. Right. Um, you know, you can go out there and hit some shots around the green. A lot of golf courses won't let you do that. And we have the rough area, too, at the end of the tee that not a lot of people use, but you can practice rough shots, too. Boy, they had plenty of them in the open, didn't they? Let so, me ask you a question. I have a question. Go ahead. Let's say you're, uh, you're in the middle of the fairway and you have 30 yards to the green. Would you rather use a standard pitching wedge and choke down on it, or would you rather use your sand wedge? Um, I'm a knock it down and get it on the ground as fast as possible kind of guy. If I've got room to roll the ball, I'd even hit a 9-iron or an 8-iron and get it on the ground and get it rolling. I mean, you saw a lot of that this week on the U.S. Open. You saw a lot of guys. I was hoping a lot of people that have done the short game school would look at that and say, boy, the Cuban was right. Look at that. They get the ball on the ground immediately. Get it on the ground because you can see your enemy. I don't want to take my sandwich and hit it harder and try and float the ball all the way to the hole. That demands a lot more field. I think. I mean, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people are just more comfortable with that sand wedge or get or um, lob wedge or whatever. But you know, I think people should should use the the standard pitching wedge more often. Well, you know, the sand wedge has got that bounce on the on the end of it. That unless the grass is nice and thick, if you're on hard pan or something, you're toast anyway. Right. You know, I'd go with the lob wedge. It's probably going to have less bounce on it for the most part, but. 
I like to get it on the ground and get it rolling. Yeah, I feel like if I'm a, if I have a shot where I have to throw the ball all the way to the hole, I'm in a bad place. I wish I wasn't there in the first place because it just made a more difficult shot to go through the air than to get on the ground. Because with the ground, I can see my enemy. I can see if it's uphill, downhill, wet, dry. I can I can guess about how fast it's going to be. I can't guess with the air. Right. But good question. That's why I hang around you. <laughs> Anybody else got a question? Go ahead and raise your little hand. There's a little hand thing you can raise, and you can ask a question. I know Tony's always got a question. Hey, Tony. Hey, Tony. Yep. We thought you might have left to get a Guinness or yep, something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. It's 11 30 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> what time is it there? <laughs> what time is it there? 11 30 in the morning. 11 30 morning? What's wrong with a Guinness at 11 30 in the morning? We have a Bloody okay. Mary first thing in the morning at a buffet or something. You see my stomach? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, what do you do when you hit a 30-yard shot? you try and get it on the ground or you try and fly it to the hole? Depends on the green. Um, depends if the green's teared. Depends whether it's soft. With a hard green, I'll try and get it on the ground because you don't know whether it's going to have a soft spot or not. You know, you don't know. You just don't know whether it's going to roll or it's going to check. Um, it depends on the conditions, Bobby. I, I, I get it on the ground as often as I can, but there's a lot of time that I'll throw it to the hole. Yeah, I mean, if it's wet, you know, and you know it can stick, you can throw it up there and what have you. But um, you, you're right. I mean, it's whatever the conditions, whatever you have to read the defense and and go with what the defense gives you. You know, but for some guys to lob a little sand wedge shot or a lob wedge shot, if they blade it and they knock it over the green into some crap or something, now they get to make 15 on the hole, you know. So I think it's a lot safer shot also to get it on the ground and get it rolling for a lot of people. Some people can't hit those little flop shots and everything, you know. They're just not there yet. They're not like you, Tony. <laughs> no, I work a lot on those shots, though, so... I'm confident about them. In fact, that you know, I'd be upset from 30 yards if I didn't get it within five or six feet. Really upset. Well, but you know, look at the numbers there. You see, those guys from 30 yards—they're not all getting it within five or six feet every time. Yeah, you should be upset with yourself when you don't. But you know, don't commit suicide because you know we got to be realistic too and realize you know here's here's the numbers. Here's what they're doing. And, uh, you know, we're, we can't expect to be too far outside of those numbers ourselves. But we should be out there making they're playing, money. They're playing different courses every week. They're playing different conditions every week. Whereas we're playing courses that are, uh, well, a lot of times, playing mainly the same course with the same conditions. So if, that, if you got them in a similar situation, their stats would be a lot bigger, I would think. Would that be wrong? No, you're right. You're 100% right. But I'm just saying, you know, when you, you figure um, you're playing some real good golf now, but when you get the regular guy that shoots 90, let's say, uh, or lady golfer, you know, some of those shots around the green are really tough on them because they they don't practice them enough. They won't go. That's why I say go to Pendleton over there. Throw, get, go to Golf Galaxy or something. Get yourself a shag bag for 29 bucks. And put some, you know, some old balls in there, and away you go. You got to practice the short game. It's not going to happen if you don't practice it. Which uh, we had a real good short game school this week, Jim. It actually worked out really well. Really, it's good. Yeah, it was good. We 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 spent a lot of time, and I went around with the iPad and videoed everybody's putting stroke and their chipping stroke and everything. I sent it all to them, and uh, it was fun. Took the iPad out. And the iPad is the coolest thing because I can go out there on the golf course with them and actually show them their swing immediately. We don't have to wait to load it into the laptop. I can show them exactly how uncoordinated they are in, in a moment's notice. <laughs> Can't you see what you look like? <laughs> Technology's changed a lot since our first day. Any other questions? And we'll wrap it up. Who's got a question? Anybody? Fire away or forever hold your peace. Any written com questions? We'll go back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're right. You're right. Hold on. I got to go to the written thing here. You're right. You're right. Oh, yeah. Here you go. All right. Can you speak to alignment like more detail on how to do this? 
Cool. Um, that's from Cliff there. Yeah, what you get. Well, go ahead, Jim. You 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 tell them about alignment. Well, <clears throat> what I like to do is get behind every shot. I kind of draw a line from my target straight back through the ball, and then I work my. I come into the ball from behind and set my club face right on that line, and then set my feet to my target. And hopefully, it, uh, everything should be aligned. My my feet, my knees, my hips, and my shoulders should all be aligned to my target. Well, don't don't you have an open stance though on a short shot? Yeah, depending on the shot, I have a little bit of an open stance. So you might align more with your right toe than you do your left foot. Yeah, the most important thing is have the club face lined up properly right at the target. Exactly, that's what you're going to swing. That's what's going to hit the ball. Um, you know, you just got to get that leading edge, like you say, pointed where you want to go and take the club straight back from it and straight forward, almost like right. you're rolling to Brooklyn. Right. Any other questions? You can type one in the little box, or you can uh, you can raise your hand. Let me check the questions thing to see if the hands come up. Hello. Oh, we gotta go to attendee. Oh, here we go, Steve Brown. Hey, Steve. Hey, good evening. How y'all doing? Go on. <laughs> What's going on, man? Hey, listen. Uh, I have a question. How critical is it for you to have your arms hanging straight down? Because sometimes I feel like my arms are out too far, and I tend to pull the ball on my uh, iron shots. Is that correct, or am I just pipe dreaming here? No, but I'll tell you what you can do. You can video yourself making a swing and send it to me. And then I can see, you know, one thing that could be happening is that the lie angle on the golf club is too upright for you, and that makes it go to the left. Or you have those hands up too high, and you're spinning your chest first. Um, but just get your – you got an iPhone or anything or any kind of digital camera? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, but did you just say that you just said that you laughed at uncoordinated people? Do, can I say that in? Steve? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man! You got to have a sense of humor. <laughs> hey, man! You're turning away customers. You're turning away customers. <laughs> <laughs> Look, before you take the video, make sure you spit the gum out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, take the video, send it to me. I'm not going to show it to anybody unless unless you tell me to. I'm going to show it to you. All right, then. And then I can see exactly, you know, what is what it is that you're doing. And listen, Tony here, he was sending his video all the way from New Zealand. You won't believe how much he's improved. And, uh, you know, it, it, once I see it, then I can bring it to your attention and show it to you and, and draw all over it and stop it in slow motion. And we'll see why it is it's going to the left. Well, all righty, then. Thank you. All right, send it to me. No, no charge. Don't worry about it. It won't cost you anything. It just, just send it to Bobby Lopez at quickfixgolf.com. All right, thank you. You are not a problem, Steve. Glad to have you, buddy. Any other questions or we're going to call it a night here? Anybody there? Let me see. Question, question, questions. Oh, I see. Also, a little, a little question mark comes up in there. Uh, in their thing there. All right, hopefully Cliff got his answer there as far as the alignment. And um, I guess we'll uh, we'll call it a night. What do you think, Chief? You got anything else to add there? I don't think so. How's Sammy? No, she's fine. <laughs> Sammy's a good dog. She misses you. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you told me the other day. Then where's Bobby been? <laughs> He's a good dog. I like that dog. All right, gang. Hope you enjoyed it. We're going to, uh, because we actually hit the recording button, we're going to go ahead and post it online. Tell all your friends about it. Tell them to go listen to it. And uh, so we can grow and, and have more folks and get more questions and carry on. All right. Good night, Jim. Good night, everybody. Good night, Bob. Good night, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs>